What's the word from Alcoa in the first quarter it's reported since the company decided to break itself up into a commodity metals business and a separate manufacturer of highly engineered products? We last checked in with Alcoa CEO Klaus Kleinfeld when he announced the split a week and a half ago. Since then, well, geez, the stock's were up 21%, very short period of time. And tonight, Alcoa just reported a quarter that came in shy of Wall Street's estimates. The company delivering a $0.06 cent earnings miss off a $0.13 cent basis, slightly lower than anticipated revenues, declined by 11% year-over-year, but they do close a lot of plants. That said, nobody thought this was going to be a good quarter, and I think you need to think about the new Alcoa, not the old one that's mired in after-hour selling. So let's dig deeper with Klaus Kleinfeld, the chairman and CEO of Alcoa, hear more about this quarter and, of course, what happens next when the company splits. Mr. Kleinfeld, welcome back to Mad Money. Hello, Jim. Good to see you. All right, Klaus, uh, this is a tough quarter for a lot of people because it's a snapshot in time. The company won't look anything like this. It's almost as if we should, I almost want to throw away the quarter. But I do know that because people feel that the earnings were below the estimates, someone is going to say, wait a second, maybe the company that is the upstream company is losing money and the company that is downstream, the value add, is actually making money when you split this up. That's not necessarily the case, is it? No, it's absolutely not the case. I mean, there are nuggets of, of really f fantastic performance also on the upstream side. I mean, we have uh, had the best uh, uh, nine months basically since 2007 in the Alumina business. And uh, also, I mean, when you look at the cast house business um, and the energy business, all of those are good businesses and performing, or the bauxite business performing very, very well. I mean, the one business that is currently under, under additional stress is the aluminum business. And uh, we ha have put together a new uh, restructuring program for this and, uh, and uh, have been launching it. So, but all, all in all, I mean, the upstream company will stand on five businesses, the ones that I just mentioned. Now, when I look at the upstream business, and I don't want to spend too much time on it, frankly, because I'm so excited about the, about the higher value added, but I've got to, I've got to do this. When I look at the upstream, I think if it were standalone right now, we are enjoying a minerals and mining rally that is the first that I've seen since 2008, the strongest, whether it be BHP, whether it be Rio, whether it be Freeport. Would the upstream company, do you think, actually be part of that rally, given the fact that it's a rally that believes that maybe we've seen the trough in, in, uh, in, in global slowdown and that China may actually be back online and we're not looking at China correctly? Well, uh, I mean, we, 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 we are providing some, some of this also. When you look at, I mean, prices are at a relatively low level compared to where they were historically, right? Uh, so a lot, of, a lot of, uh, of the producers are underwater, right? So this cannot sustain for a long time. Secondly, we've seen that supply and demand are coming more in balance. We actually, our experts actually project a deficit for next year uh, in, in, in aluminum. Uh, then we have seen the stockpiles also, what's in warehouses, also coming down to levels that are below the, the, the levels that we've seen before. So I think um, there could be a lot of optimism in there, but a lot depends obviously also on the sentiment because the sentiment plays a major role and there's a lot of volatility uh, in the world these days uh, that's kind of confusing and mixing it up and we've seen it this quarter and we've seen it uh, continued also in the discussion today. All right, let's talk value added. Uh, the acquisitions you made have made it so that you're suddenly in a much larger total addressable market. The Aerospace, the Lockheed Martin, the Airbus. These are, these are contracts that, let, let's just say, you would never have even think about trying to get. Uh, but with these two acquisitions that you made in the last year, you're almost a shoe in to get them. Well, that's true for the Lockheed, Lockheed contract. I mean, 1.1 billion, we announced it earlier this week, actually. Uh, that's for titanium, all 100% of the titanium mill products that go into the Joint Strike Fighter, which is the most advanced aircraft that exists on this planet. And obviously, we would not have gotten it because we wouldn't have had that cap capability. The interesting thing is, when you look at what we are doing for the Joint Strike Fighter, we're also providing a lot of parts. And we will be the ones in our other businesses to do a lot of value add applied to the mill products. So this is clearly a wonderful, uh, wonderful thing to have in the first quarter where we have uh, just closed uh, RTI. It was the 23rd of July. So this is actually very, very good. Um, the, other, the other contract on Airbus on the fast now a billion that we would have been able to win before. But I do believe that our uh, increased presence in the aerospace market 
we are really a very strong player when it comes to aerospace structures and when it comes to uh, jet engines. And this, uh, this uh, capabilities obviously help our customers. And when they win, we win. And that's what we've been seeing here again. Yeah, um, there's so many things I want to talk about. I want to talk about lightweight. I want to talk about the Ford contracts. I want to, I want to talk about uh, all of the different things that you're doing in order to be able to really take share away from copper, some of the old things. But I got in my hand something you sent me, which is a triangle. It's a 3D triangle that's made it's a technological marvel, frankly. It's 3D printing, but it's tensile strength. It's not plastic. I dropped it earlier. One of my stagehands said, I thought I cracked it. He said, it's indestructible. This is what the new Alcoa is when I think of it. The uh, up Can you please describe how this particular value-added piece of material is the new Alcoa that you should be thinking about? Well, I mean, what you have there uh, is a 3D printed metals piece. And in fact, it's actually the 3D model of the Alcoa logo. I, I don't know whether you, see, you, you have seen that, right? And uh, you can see also it's a very, very fine resolution. And this, uh, this is made out of a metals powder bed printer. Now, the interesting thing in this business, I mean, the, the powder is the most critical thing in this. And we have announced uh, a few weeks ago that we are actually building a powder facility for those type of applications outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, so we will be making what I would call the smart ink for metals, metals uh, powder printing. We also, at the same time, said we have developed technology called AmpliForge, where we can use other 3D printing capabilities in, in metals and make them through other, other processes, make them as hard for and as stress resistant for applications that today are not, those type of things are not usable for. So that's one part of how the new Alcoa, it will have a different name by the way, Jim, right. uh, will look like. And uh, another, another thing is the micro mill. I mean, the micro mill also in this quarter, we announced uh, two things. We announced a joint development agreement with Ford uh, and Ford at the, on the micro mill material going into auto, strong or lighter and, and, and more formable, that's a combination that before was not possible, made possible through this revolutionary technology. And Ford is, as we speak, putting it into the new F-150, right, and, and work, working with it. And also, in, we, did we announce an agreement with Daniele that we are commercializing this technology. So we are also revolutionizing the business model here. We don't want to keep this for us. We are going to commercialize this, and we are going to get the licensing, agree uh, licensing uh, revenues from it. So pretty much no CapEx, but licensing agreement. Good model, and I believe that most people understand that. I call it like a software model. Well, that's exactly what I wanted people to realize, because it's a technology company that you're going to be getting if you take advantage of the value added. It's not just an aluminum yes. metal bending company versus a company that sells aluminum in bulk. So, <laughs> Klaus Kleinfeld, Chairman CEO of Alcoa, thank you so much for coming on the show. Pleasure, Tim. If you take action on this stock and you sell it at 10 bucks, making a big mistake. Stay with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get to jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.